tell you this, this was my dream, how to get out of that. Uh, one of my many dreams, and this was a lesser dream, but the black cab man, do you remember the, the, uh, the black cabs in London? Yeah. Yeah. So these, I remember, these guys, I remember them well. These guys, they earn a good wage. Um, it's not even like a cab, because most of the time people don't book you in, you know? You just drive around. So say you're, say you're out and you're having a good day, and you think, you know, I don't want to go to work today. You're not letting anyone down. But then on the days you do have to go to work, you can just go to work. You just turn up. The money. You talking about the fake? You talking about the fake cab? <laughs> Not that man, but he's got a good job as well. <laughs> All right, love, want to ride? <laughs> I'm starting a recording. Work, 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 work. See me in it. Work, 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 work. See me in it. Dirt, 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 dirt. Yes, revisiting round two. Ding, ding. We're talking about the meaning of work. Um, yeah. James, care to recap our last conversation? Maybe go back to... Uh, I can play it all. I can play every twenty, every 25 minutes of it in my mind. <laughs> but Sal, Sal wasn't happy and he accidentally deleted it. Accidentally. <laughs> no, it's, worth, it's always worth talking about, again, the meaning of work because exactly. it's something that we do many days of our lives, many hours of our waking day. So it's an interesting one. How much meaning do you get out of work? I saw this Venn diagram... I always feel a bit more intelligent when I see a Venn diagram and I understand what it's trying to say. So there's four circles. It's talking about work, right? So one circle is what you love. The second circle is what the world needs. The third circle is what the world will pay for. And then the fourth is what you do well. And then there's a difference between a passion, a charity, a vocation, and a career where they intersect. So... It's an interesting one. How many of the how many of the four circles do you cover in, in what you do every day? I think it's a, a decent question to ask yourself. And if you're in the middle, then you're living the dream, I, I suppose. I... Yeah, that would be on this Venn diagram, bliss. 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 Yeah. Bliss. But I think if it's, I mean, one thing that has to happen, you have to get paid. Like we, we can't be um, too airy fairy about this. A job is done for money, right? For, for the green, for the lolly, for the dog. Yeah, smooths everything around me. But I do feel that a job can, it can be an important part of your identity, an important part of your happiness, but it can also destroy your sense of well-being completely if you're not too careful. So it's, it's an important aspect to get right, isn't it? How well, James, do you feel you are on your Venn diagram? What the world needs, English teaching, I think, and, and teacher training. But definitely the way that I try and look at it from my, my perspective anyway. I think, I hope that's what, not the world may be, but a lot of teachers and a lot of students that I know. Um, I think it's useful in that way, necessary. Um, what you do well, I mean, I'm biased, but I think, I, I think I'm all right. I think I do it well. At least I enjoy it. I definitely, I'm engaged when I'm in it, you know. So that's, um, that would be on the, on the other on the other part of your Van diagram, wouldn't it? And they enjoy yeah, so that's the second one. And then what you love. I mean, love's a strong word, but I definitely enjoy what I'm doing. That's, that's circle number three. And then what the world will pay for. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a tons of money. I could definitely make more money doing many other jobs, but all things considered, considering the four circles on that Venn, I'm, I'm happy with the way it, the, the lifestyle it gives me, yeah. Mm, so, yeah. Keta, how, yeah. how do you feel about the Venn diagram? Let me think about the Venn diagram. So, uh, first of all, are we talking about work in general or a job? Because those two things can be separate. For example, a forced labor, I don't think that's under the Venn diagram, is it? No, no, no. We'll, we'll stick to um, fully contractual uh, okay. paid labor, voluntary labor. Okay, fair enough. Well, voluntary is not paid. So voluntary would be one thing where you could get a lot of um, satisfaction out of, for example. No, no, what I mean is it's your choice to go into that job. Okay, voluntary oh. labor, yeah, okay. But then within the voluntary labor, you can also voluntarily work for, without money if you do something for a religious purpose, for example, which is still work. Yeah. But if, you, if you're still talking about remunerated work, then um, what's the question? <laughs> on, on the Venn diagram, James, so give us the four. So, where, so I'll give you the four again. Number yeah. one. Your job, Sal, what, what would you say your job title is? Because I know you do kind of kind of different things, but as a general 
if you were to, if, if someone asked you what your job is, what you do to get paid, what would your job title be? I don't think I would have one hat to put on on what my general uh, job title would be. I'd be probably a um, generalist who does certain uh, who does different things in the entertainment and the IT world. But I don't think that I could really give it one one fancy title, you know, that you put on a business card. Yeah, uh, I think that's the thing of the I'm past too. That's fine. That's a good description. But I mean, so if James James tells us the four on the Venn diagram again, you could tell us okay. where how you feel you hit in the within the four. Do you remember the Venn diagram? Down? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't remember. Sorry, remember. sorry, on my phone. I'm reading it. I do remember so you, that. You, what you love. Yes. Take note, guys. What you love. Yes. Number two. What the world needs. Number world three. Needs. Okay. What you do well. Mm-hmm. And number four. What the world will pay for. Okay. Well, yeah. So if you're if you're in all four, you're in the center, basically, of the diagram, right? Yeah, yeah. blitz. Yeah, blitz. I'd say uh, I I would move. I would probably uh, hover around the center. I'm sometimes more, sometimes mm. less, because uh, my tagline is I help people and I entertain them, and sometimes both at the same time. So, um, you know, entertainment. The world needs to you know be entertained, especially in in dire times, but any time really. Um, it's good for the soul. It's good for um, the spirits. It's it's not, and in a way, it's also important for survival because you know to to get through our our our, our way of living. You know, do you want to be distracted every now and then and not feel like you're just grinding to survive every day, which is what you have to do uh, very often. So entertainment, yeah, it's something people need, and they are more or less willing to pay for it. So maybe, maybe that's a bit further. It depends. Some people are actually willing to pay a lot of it for it. So it depends really. Uh, we can get into the specifics of that because there's a different projects I'm doing there. Um, and the IT stuff, there's, there's always people who, <laughs> who have problems with the computers or who want to get things done from an app to a website. They don't know how to do it or they can't be bothered to do it. So uh, also there, there's a, let's say a, 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 what do you call it? Divergence. Yeah. Um, no, there's not a different word I'm looking for, but I can't find it right now. But it's yeah. fine. A compromise or? Spectrum. A spectrum. That's what I want. Spectrum. Spectrum. Looking for. There we go. Uh, I'll say, yeah, Sal, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Sorry, Dan. I'm, I'm, inter- I'm interested to know because when we talked about your travels around Europe, um, backpacking, if I, remen- I rem- if I remember correctly, the catalyst was that you were really fed up with your job, right? Or, or your job was one of the things that you weren't satisfied with. Yeah, I couldn't take making all that much money there, so I really had to quit. Okay. So what was what was missing there that really made you throw it in? Well, I guess I was not identifying with what I was doing um, and I didn't see anything useful in it or I didn't find any purpose in it, let's say that. uh, In hindsight, maybe uh, now that I have... You know, matured a bit. Maybe I would have found some way to explain <laughs> explain away what I was doing. But back then, I just felt it was dull. It was useless. It was pointless. It wasn't making me grow as a person. But maybe also I wasn't giving it a chance to you know to grow in that period of time. It's always a two way street. So it also depends on your state of mind. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just it just wasn't something that was fulfilling me, as they would say. But it's it's not even that. It's it's it was literally putting me down pulling uh, it was pulling me down it was making me s- almost depressed you know it wasn't the job's fault so mm, just so I think just there's, there's an important frame of mind yeah yeah a frame of mind or personality there's a lot of really good research about job types and personality types like we've all done the big five personality test mm-hmm. you can try and find yeah. a job which matches that like for example if you're if you're a teacher and you're very very introvert it's probably not the best thing for you because you're going to be interacting with people all day. Um, and I mean, you could, you could play with that all over, but there's, there's definitely personality types which match better with certain types of jobs. What about you, Dan? On the Van diagram. Well, I think it's interesting what, not that I relate to this, but um, what Sal was saying there about uh, kind of being, he moves around it almost. You're not always in the middle, but sometimes you are. I expect everyone's like that because at the end of the day, a job, you know, you you don't you you have to can't think of a job where you don't. I, I will tell you an example actually. But what I was saying was that you 
you have to commit to something and say say you commit to do something in a week this is how most jobs work then you have in that when that week by the time that week comes around you might not be up for anymore but you have to do it you know and if you don't there's consequences do you know what i mean it's not always ideal but let me tell you this this is my dream how to get out of that uh one of my many dreams and this was a lesser dream but the black cab man you remember the the uh who, the black cabs in london yeah yeah so he, uh, he's got remember them well guys they earn a good wage um it's not even like a cab because most of the time people don't book you in you know you just drive around so say you're say you're out and you're having a good day and you think you know i don't want to go to work today you're not letting anyone down but then on the days you do have to go to work you can just go to work you just turn up the money you're talking about the fake are you talking about the fake cab (laughs) not that man but he's got a good job as well (laughs) all right last one a ride (laughs) Long time no see. <laughs> I, won't give, I won't give you the rest of the quote. No, um, no, you see what I mean? I, I always felt like that was a, they, they had a quite a good deal because they weren't letting anyone down if they didn't want to go to work so they could decide a bit more day to day. You know, I envied them for that. But yeah, where do I fall in the Van diagram? Um, I do... So give, give me the four again. Do I love it? All right. I've, I've learned... What you love? love. What... What you love, what the world needs, what the world will pay for, what you do well. Okay, so the world, the world, world pays for it. Do they need it? I'm never too convinced. You know, people will be, well, you go abroad and, you know, some walls aren't as smooth as others, so it's definitely not something people need. It makes me laugh when people say, are people always going to need a plaster? You think they won't. Like, there's other, they didn't need it. You know, it makes things look a bit nicer, but tidy things up, you know, it's not necessary, is it? It's like um, the plumber. The plumber is needed. Our man Jordan Peterson always says, doesn't he? He says plumbers are saved more lives than doctors. Sanitary, eh? <laughs> Sanitization. That's a sanitation. <laughs> sanitation. <laughs> sanitation. It's true. It's true what he says, isn't it? So do people need it? Not so much. I always feel like the build, build, uh, an actual builder who knows how to build something structurally, that's, a, that's something people need, isn't it? People need shelter. So, you know. And... Uh, but I like it, and I'm, I think I'm good at it, and I think maybe my uh, my energy, I've got a lot of energy, I think, compared to the next person, so it's it's good to, that I'm using my energy up in the day, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I don't fear the office-type job. I think I could do that as well and find a new balance, but I do, yeah, maybe it's good for me to get rid of my energy in the day like that, you know, be, be up and active. Mm-hmm. And you, you just kind of learn to love it, you know? I do like it. There's something quite zen about it, <coughs> quite chilled out, and... You know, if you're stressing about something, with the plastering, you, you get into it. Once you're in it, you, you have to stay focused on it because otherwise you ruin the whole thing and have to do it again. It's not like you can just sort of have lunch when you want. And so something about that kind of takes your mind off everything else because you know you just know that you're going to have, you know, you just over time, I suppose you do a couple of things wrong and then you realise, right, I've just got to stay on it, you know, in the hard way. And then you see what I mean? So there's something kind of zen about it and just putting it on. I don't know if you've ever seen a plaster at work, but it's, it's quite... Even if I'm, I walk onto a job and someone's doing some plastering, you still sort of look at and put it on, and it all looks quite mm-hmm. satisfying, you know. So yeah, I've seen you work, Dennis. I've, 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 sorry, go on, James. No, so I said I've seen you work. It's poetry in motion. Poetry in motion, baby. What? Like, what, like watching what, the Ireland think, shuffle. Well, I think it's really cool about your job, and what, what, what I see that fits you well is that you do get a lot of interaction with people, and you're great with people, right? And so you're really good at talking to the customers, explaining to them, letting them, like you, were, like we were saying with Josh Brock a few weeks yeah. back, letting them come to the decision of what they want, but helping guide them towards it rather than yeah. saying, I think this is best for your house. Um, yeah, so you get that, like you it. get that personal private time where you can, like you say, just, you can get into that flow, get into that zen. And actually, um, in comparison to the builders who were on a job, long you know people, builders say they're doing the extension they could be there two three months whereas i'm always in and out of a job two three days you never get bored of anything if i'm on a big job it'd be two weeks and it's generally not uh uh full two weeks on a place so you never get bored of anything you know you're here there you're everywhere you see lots of people so yeah that's definitely enjoyable but i mean when you're talking about jobs you love i think sal like you say in the entertainment that's a lot more like like you said i know you'd like to probably be doing more entertainment than it but at least you're kind of on your you, you you get to incorporate a, a lot of that and um, I'd, I'd imagine you're moving towards you know over time you'd want to be doing more and more of the entertainment yeah. sort of stuff so at least you're kind of all you know you're kind of on the path there and yeah it's good whereas pl- the plastering like 
I don't know, you don't you don't come out of school and think, oh, I just want to be a plasterer, you know? It's like it's usually because you, I don't know, you're following the money or whatever. And then you learn to love it on the way. It's not that I don't love it. I'm not unhappy doing it, but do you see what I mean? It's a different Yeah, yeah, different for sure. But that's, that opens up another interesting wing on on work and identity. I mean, the link between work and identity. And f- from what I've seen in the UK, anyway, like it's one of the first questions you ask somebody is, what's your name, what do you do? And then your identity is kind of stuck to your job title, right? I remember you saying this, James. This is what you liked about the European countries. When yeah, you, when it is. It, I, mean, I, know, I noticed that in Spain and I noticed it here. I'll tell you one quick story. Last week I was cycling with a friend and, and another. Um, we were talking about a friend of his who I've, I've also met. Let's call him Paolo because his name's Paolo. And I said, <laughs> what, does Paolo, what does Paolo do for work anyway? And he goes, and, this, and he's known this friend for about 20 years. And he goes, you know, I don't really know. I, I never really understand. It's like, all right, so they spend all these hours together and they don't talk about work. And I feel that's so refreshing because you are not yeah. just your job. Even if it's what you do for the majority of your waking hours, it, it doesn't have to be your identity. It can be if, if, if that's a positive thing for you. But um, I do like that aspect of, of decoupling the, the human from the way that they make a living. Beautiful. I like think John, you have friends. to do that as well um, because we're talking about about the ideal state now because we're talking about the Venn diagram and us mostly liking what we do uh, you know maybe there, there there's times maybe that we like it less but there's jobs I've been doing certainly I'm sure you also have been been there and a lot of most people in the world I suppose are there that they do something that they don't like doing or that they even hate doing or that they you know are not particularly fond of doing. And so that's the question then if it becomes a, a, a hurdle, if it, you know, if it makes you miserable as a human being, mm-hmm. or if you find the purpose, or if you can kind of explain it away. And I also found often that even jobs I didn't like, if there was a purpose behind it, so maybe I had to make money to do something else that would follow that kind of job, job experience, or maybe it is something that uh, helps people and you do it for a while and you, know, you don't particularly like the task itself, but you see the result of it and you see people are being helped by it, or maybe you just have to sustain your family because most of your family members are sick, you're the only one who's making the money. That's a kind of a, you know, that's a very good uh, motivational booster if, if other people depend on you. So then maybe, you know, those people don't even have the, the luxury or the time to think about do I like my job or not. Yeah, that's true. And, and it still works somehow. So, you know, then in, in a strange way, there's still purpose in something that they don't find purposeful in itself. Mm. But but there's a there's a purpose behind it, and so they they may may, may not la- like the task itself, but they like having a job or they like providing for the family. So, yeah. but I think you've got to be really careful there, and it, this is a skill in itself mm-hmm. to compartmentalize. It's like say nine to five, I'm doing this, I hate it, but at five o'clock, this is my life, and you really have to live that five to ten or eleven p.m. You really have to live because you've been dead all day. That sounds a bit dramatic, but that's what it is. So you, because imagine if you have that job that you hate and then that contaminates the rest of the day, like a drop of sewage contaminates the whole pool. Right. Um, so you come home and you that's the whole life, oh, right? I can't, I'm just working tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or weekend. Like you're happy on Saturday, you get absolutely smashed because you want to forget the whole week and Sunday you're hungover and then Sunday nice misery because you've got to do the whole round again from Monday to Friday. It happens, you know? And I know that it's... Um, a real luxury to be able to focus on, you know, oh, what, what do I think will be useful? What do I enjoy doing? Because a lot of people, maybe the majority even, just have to make a living. And that's the, the cold, hard facts. But and just a, they, good point. Uh, it's a good point for being self-employed versus working for somebody else because some people are really good. They come home at 5 p.m. and whatever they did before, it's gone in their head. I've seen those people. But mm-hmm. it's more if you work for somebody else rather than if you're self-employed like that's one thing that i found out uh, having your own company your brain never really stops or it's really hard to get off of work thoughts even you know late night or because there's always something that you have to do and it's your own responsibility to do, to do it it's not something that your colleagues gonna do the next day so um yeah um funny enough so i remember when i was kind of making my decision to be self-employed i thought that I was just too invested anyway, even if it wasn't my job. That's how I felt. And I thought this is going to, it's bothering me anyway. So why not reap the rewards? If, if you are someone who can go home and switch off, then yeah, maybe, maybe you're, you are better. You know, maybe you'll enjoy the perks of working for someone. 
but for someone like me anyway, if, if it needed doing, I'd, I couldn't ignore that pressure anyway. So I'd sort of stay late and get it done and you think, bloody hell, what's the point in this? I may as well be, you know, reaping the reward of that as well rather than just, you know, taking it on. Do you see what I mean? Right. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one because then that comes that comes around to attention, right? And what you, if you're able to see a thought and let it pass, like like the meditators tell us, because otherwise it's nine o'clock at night. I do this sometimes. I think, oh my god, I need to take this note on my phone. It was five o'clock this morning. I I woke up to go to the bathroom. And I thought, oh, I need to add this to the presentation, and I couldn't I couldn't get back to sleep until I wrote it on my phone. <laughs> and I looked at it in the morning, thought. It's not, it's not a bad idea, but it's not the best one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they're little things, you know, like I've in, in five minutes, I'm off, it's, it's seven o'clock on a Friday night to those who are listening later on. Um, we've got like a little reunion of, of teachers that have done our teacher training course in Rome. And technically that's work for me, but I'm actually looking forward to it, you know? So that's, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's man. awesome. Um, I remember during our first attempt at this recording, I told you about a. I told you about the conversation I listened to with Tim Ferriss, and he had Scott Adams on. Do you remember this? No. And at the end of the, at the end of most of Tim Ferriss, t- Scott Adams is a guy who created the Dilbert comics, and now he's just kind of a. You basically these two guys are just multimillionaires, and so they got they got a real freedom of what to do with their time. And at the end, he asks. Um, I think you always ask this question, or maybe you ask some a question, and this was his question to Scott Adams. But what what would it, what advice would you give to people? And he said, "Be useful." He said, "You know, I've been in a position where I don't have to do anything for anyone for a long time." And he said, "You don't feel happy unless you're being useful." So there's your, you know, there's your meaning of work. This man isn't working because he has to feed his family and stuff. He just knows that part. Of, you know, if you're going to live your best life, and you're be, being useful as part of that. Yeah. There you go, babe. Man, that's awesome, yeah, because that's like uh, some research I heard a, a day or two ago about people who have won the lottery. And after, on average, if you've won millions on the lottery, after three years, you have the same happiness level as the average paraplegic. Really? You know, not to dump on paraplegics, but the point is that what, what, do, what, do, people, what do people want to do when they've won the lottery? Give up work. And it's not always the answer because... There's a lot of meaning and a lot of positive motivation that comes from work. There's a lot of community as well. A lot of ambition and a lot of good stuff can come from work and a lot of dark stuff too. So you, have to, you just have to stay in the light if you can. That's right, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, run, I've got to work. <laughs> no, really. I oh, know, I know. Good stuff, man. All right. All right. Did it Cheers, well. guys. We Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, viewers and listeners and see you on the next episode of the three-headed hydra bye bye bye